It has a lot of history because it was King Farouk's car when he was 11 years old. Good morning. It's 10.30 a.m. on Saturday, and we're about to head out to the British Motor Club of New Orleans annual British Motoring Festival in Covington. We're just here picking up the car, and we are about to hit the road. Well, we've got the cover off, the top down. The weather has gone from rainy back to a beautiful sunny morning. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing started up, let it warm up. This car generally starts up pretty easy. I'm gonna give it two pumps of gas. Pull out the choke. We'll start it and immediately put the choke back in. There we go, oil pressure immediately popped up. I'll let it warm up just a little bit. So we'll now perform the ritual of bending over at a 90 degree angle and spilling gas all over the back bumper. I, I would say putting gas in the car is the greatest challenge of owning an MGB. It's a fine balance of correct core body posture and just the right angle of the nozzle going into the filler there. It's just impossible to look cool filling up this car. This is even more important than gas. And that's picking up Louisiana's own community coffee. We, we can't make a trip with a hot cup of coffee. So we have arrived safely and without any problems to our stay for the weekend, the historic Southern Hotel on the Register of Historic Hotels of America. This is a great little place that Michelle and I like to stay at pretty often. In fact, they were nice enough to give us a little reserve parking place for the MG while we're here for the weekend. We're going to go locate lunch real quick, and then we're going to start setting up for the car show. We decided to have lunch at the historic Greyhound. It's a very good restaurant and literally made inside of the old Greyhound bus station here in Cove. How about this? Margarita pizza at the Greyhound. Greyhound for the win. It's now 2 p.m. on Friday afternoon and the British beauties are already rolling in the town. Right here we have a magnificent magnet by MG. You're probably more familiar with MG as a maker of the little two-seat roadsters, but they did make these absolutely gorgeous passenger cars. And we'll see this one tomorrow. <laughs> well, we are getting everything set up for this show. King Charles, of course, will be in attendance. And a sure sign of a well-organized show is conceptual drawings. Yep, everything is going to be laid out for tomorrow. 
They probably even could tell me which one of these slots my own car is going to go in. So it's six o'clock and the reception has already turned into a fun drinking party down in the hotel lobby, partying the way you only can in South Louisiana. <laughs> After enjoying a few drinks at the Cypress Bar, we went to the block party downtown and got a sneak peek of some of the cars we would be seeing on Saturday, including this really cool 1970 Bond Bug. Then Saturday morning started very early at Coffee Rainy, one of our favorite little breakfast nooks in Covington. Well, the day has arrived. The cars are taking the field. We have a gorgeous e type MGVs. Really cool Triumph Stag. He's been working on this a while. First time I've seen him at a show. Good morning. Good morning. Chris Landry in his B. Chris Landry. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Chris. How's it going? Great. Beautiful. Good morning. MGP GT in blue. What a pretty car. MGA. Good morning. Michelle and our very own MG. Good morning, Michelle. Triumph TR3A, I think. Good morning. Land Rover. Fit for exploration. A Jaguar, I believe. That is an SK140. I'm not well versed on these Jags. This is a gorgeous example. Wow, look at that. Another nice Land Rover. E type and Matthew, our talented singer, rolling up in the Morgan three wheeler. Uh, Modern Jaguars checking in. Austin Healy 3000. One more modern Jag. I see a couple more classics round in the corner here. Triumph TR3 followed by what appears to be a pre-war car. Good morning. Is it an early MG? And I believe it is. Good morning. What model is this one? 1930. Beautiful. This is pre war. Yeah. Wow, I love it. Absolutely gorgeous. It's an M type, the first kind of series they made. They made it a while before this. 
Very nice. Glad to have you all here. And there you have a sample of just some of the cars. Now, I need to get back to ours because they're taking pictures of everyone as they check in. I, I don't know. I may have missed the picture by now, but we're going to take another visit to these cars later on today. And Michelle is getting the car parked up at our show slot for the day right in there. Lovely MGBs and Keith Vizina's just dropped off the beer trailer, which matches this car, of course. All this is very organized. Uh, they let us right in the where the cars park. British Motor Club of New Orleans putting on an excellent, well-organized show. There is a booth here full of beautiful curios and memorabilia and cars. I've already picked out a couple pieces for our new garage. This is our row of T-Series cars. Very nice to see these cars set up in their natural habitat along an old American downtown street. Just adds a lot of ambiance to the show. British Motor Club of New Orleans prides itself on attracting different and unusual cars into their shows and it doesn't get more different and unusual than this really cool Reliant Bond Club. This is a three-wheel vehicle built by Reliant and Bond in the late 60s and early 70s. And I'm going to see if I can track down the owner to tell us more about it. Alright, so tell us about your Bond bug. Well, what would you like to know? Uh, well, for one thing, how rare are these cars, both in the U.S. and Great Britain? There is, uh, they made just over 2,000 of them. 2,000, wow. Um, it was the last car made by the Bond manufacturing, designed okay. by them, before Reliant bought them out. Okay. So, Reliant decided to go ahead and make it. They made about 2,000 of them, just over 2,000. There's 12 in North America and 8 that run. So only 8 running examples of well, this car in, in North America. Wow, last that is... Count. That's give or take a day. <laughs> that is exceedingly rare. But uh, what everyone wants to know, of course, is what is it like to drive? Everybody sees a three-wheel car and they think it's very easy to tip over, but this one sets very low. It's got a low center of gravity. It's not near as bad as Reliant Robin, which is top heavy, which will tip over. <laughs> wow. Uh, but I've had this up to about 70, it will corner, it, it does everything just fine. It's a little scary at 70. Um, I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very tiny car. And you came all the way to Covington, yeah. Louisiana from Indiana. Southern Indiana, we belong to the Louisville British Sports Car Club. All right, well shout Louisville out to the Louisville British Sports Car Club and thank you so much, no Danny, problem. for bringing no this problem. beautiful car thank out you. here to us. Thank you. And here again, we have that gorgeous MG Magnet. Again, MG usually known for their super exciting sports cars. This was a sedan, or what they say in Britain, a saloon car. But this is a very exciting car in and of itself. Look at that gorgeous wooden dash. This is a beautiful example of the Magnet. This is definitely something I would love to daily drive. It's not unusual for the MGB class to be the largest class in a British car show, largely because they built so many. Um, over its 18-year production run, approximately 500,000 MGBs were built, and I think that is only bested by the Mini Cooper, who had a 40-year production run, and I think just over five million units and this is the car that i have a deep soft spot for and that is the mgb limited edition this is one of the last 8,000 mgbs built in the special black livery with the silver striping um there should be and i think there is let's check it out um the limited edition plaque on the glove box door and this is a very fine 
example of one of the very last cars to roll out of the MG factories. So tell me about your car. Okay, I purchased it in England in 1965, and I've owned it since then. I had it restored in England with the paint and upholstery, and I did all the engine work myself. So you brought it from England? It was wow. transported from England to Mobile, Alabama. My dad went down to Mobile, Alabama, picked it up at the port, and brought it back to Russell, Alabama, in the back of a pickup. Wow, <laughs> and it would fit in the back of a pickup, obviously. Like yeah. <laughs> wow, what kind of power does it put out? Uh, the English rating is about 20 horsepower RAC. It has an engine that's 847 cc's overhead cam, thermal siphon, no water pump. Right, thermal siphon radiator, very cool. And a honeycomb radiator, too. Wow, what is a beautiful car? What is the model? M type. M type, okay. And this most, predates the TC. Right, yeah, it's a 1930. And most of them back then were fabric bodied, like fabric strip stretched over okay. an airplane wing and painted. This is aluminum bodied. Only 273 of them produced were aluminum bodied. So this is exceedingly rare. More rare than the ordinary one, yes. Sir. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing some information about your beautiful 1930. The MGM So, Mark, tell us about your Austin 7. Well, it has a lot of history because it was King Farouk's car when he was 11 years old. This very car? This very car was King Farouk's car, who was the last king of Egypt. He had 250 cars in the end. They were all auctioned in 1954. And an Egyptian fellow bought this one in 54, sold it to another Egyptian guy. And my father was um, a medical doctor in Beirut, Lebanon at the time, and he was treating this man, sold a car. They made a deal for 700 pounds, which was like $300 at the time. And he told him, uh, doctor, that's the king's car. My father didn't believe it at the time. After 20 years of research and magazine photos and all that, we found out it was true. And when I bought a book one day on King Farouk, there was a photo of the car with the king in it, with his three sisters. Here's a photo. That's King Farouk when he was 11. The car is 1930. He was born in 20, so he must be like 11 years old with his three sisters, one of whom was the most beautiful woman in the world in 1950s, one of whom also married the Shah of Iran. Wow. Yes. They all, all their names started with an F because there was like a a lady who told them the F uh, letter uh, was a good luck letter. So wow, he's Farouk, she's Faiza Farouk. It is said one of their ancestors on the mother's side was a general from Napoleon's army who was, wow, who was, in, Egypt, who was in Egypt in the 1800s, yes. What an interesting story. Yes. Austin 7 showed me a car truly fit for a king. Right. Yeah, like, 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 like,
And our British Motoring Show doesn't just include automobiles, but we've got some very fine British bikes as well, Triumph and Norton. So tell us about this really cool Triumph motorcycle. Okay, this is a, a 1950 Triumph 60 Thunderbird. And uh, it's a built-in special for racing at Bonneville Salt Flats in this modified vintage gas class. So it burns regular gasoline. And uh, my son rode it to a, a speed record. He, he broke the existing record that it held. And uh, uh, that was in 1995. And uh, that somebody didn't break it till like 1999. So they had a, a four year record on Bonneville Salt Flats yeah. on this bike. Oh yeah. Incredible. And what year model was this 1950. Based on? So a 1950 bike was winning Salt Flats records in 95, like right. 40 years later. Yep. That's incredible. Yep. <laughs> As you can see, the town of Covington really came out and supported this event. I am so pleased with the turnout, the variety of cars, and the sheer number of cars we had today. Voting is underway, finishes up in about 15 minutes. Now, the most difficult thing about these car shows is the vote because voting among these cars is like voting to choose your own children. It's hard to pick between two, three, four perfect examples of an automobile. I've just turned in the ballot. Finally, I'm gonna be able to sit down, most likely with a cold English beer, and relax for the first time since 9 a.m. Now this probably looks like a normal ice chest full of see how it opens up? English and Irish beer. And see? And it's actually the back end of an MG. It gets towed by this MG. I'm gonna have you're gonna have to blank out my name tag. <laughs> <laughs> So this is it. This is the beer trailer, the legend, the one and only, built by Keith Vizino, one of our club members. And it is our favorite place to stop and get a beer during a show. So this is some of my favorites over here is those unsung heroes of the British roads. They're not convertibles, but man, how lovely and beautiful is this? This is a Morris Minor 1000 Traveler Edition. This is the Woody of the British roads. This was the fun family getaway car. This was the SUV. This is how Britain went camping and fishing. It's also how a lot of Americans did, too, because this sold pretty well here in the state. And Michelle was honored.
to receive third place in late model MGB. By four o'clock, we were absolutely starving, so we stopped to have burger and fries at the beer garden right across the street from the show. Good morning. I'm just wrapping up the video today and I thought I'd do a little follow up on that uh, curio sale that was at the show. I had a mental list of some of the things I wanted to pick up and I found everything on the list. So I just want to go through a few of the things I bought from the gentleman that was selling models. I found this cool um, Jaguar XK120 matchbox car. Not really sure of the time period. This really neat uh, reproduction of one of the very first Matchbox cars, which is the little MGA. Even has the vintage style box and some vintage style packaging. Uh, these were put out uh, for the 40th anniversary, which would have been around 1993. So this right here is over 30 years old. Pretty cool find. I wanted another grill badge. I thought this one looked nice. This is from Roma. Very pretty badge. I'm going to mount this on the car when I get a chance. And I found a kit version of our car. Now, um, the box art is actually accurate to the way our car left the factory. Um, According to the British Motor Heritage Certificate, our car was originally this color green with the rubber bumper. So, don't quite know if I'm going to build this up as the way the car left the factory or as the way it looks now, but it'll be a fun kit to do either way.